So I have an issue, everything. <laughs> We're now distinctly green in colour. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy Mini Point. This time it's something a little bit different. I'm currently doing a video and I'm doing a video on a Commodore 64 which was recovered in very poor condition out of a storage unit, an old uh, abandoned shop that's been abandoned for about 30 years. Uh, birds, insects, mould, uh, water, everything's been in. Now these are some of the steels and yeah they're not in very good condition i mean that is a very thin steel plate and yeah not the nicest condition i don't know how well these are going to come out to be honest but these i should be able to do something with and i'm going to try nickel plating now nickel plating is fairly straightforward and what I'm going to do is create a nickel solution and that will then uh, use electricity to plate the surfaces of all the steel parts. Now it's not just as straightforward as dropping it into a solution and away you go. I'm going to have to make sure these are well cleaned and all the debris and rust are off. And that's why this one may be an issue because it's so thin and there are areas where I just can't get in properly, I don't think, to clean up the rust that are going to cause me the biggest issues. The main steel parts are going to be cleaned with an angle grinder with a knotted brush attachment and the smaller pieces I'm going to do with a Dremel, with again with a brush attachment and I'm going to do all that off camera because it's so dirty and noisy and yeah. So the next time you see these, these will be cleaned, ready for dipping. Now, there are a number of items you're going to need, so let me get these now. So you're going to need a number of things to make the initial plating solution. You're going to need a couple of nickel plates. You're going to need some form of container, preferably with a sealing lid, so you can keep the solution for later table salt and vinegar, white vinegar, to make the solution. This will simply increase the electrical conductivity of the vinegar to allow the, uh, the nickel to dissolve or at least release uh, ions into the solution. You're going to need some way of attaching the plates to the side of the container you'll need some sort of power input. I'm going to be using 12 volts and up to three amps. And when we actually come to the plating itself, you're also going to need distilled water, isopropyl alcohol, and the most dangerous thing I think I've bought to date, hydrochloric acid. This is 10%. And this is going to be used to thoroughly clean components that we're going to plate. So we can't have fingerprints or anything on it because obviously they'll show up in the etching. Now the last thing you're going to need is some form of copper, copper wire preferably. Uh, this is multi-core 20 gauge um, which I've stripped the insulation off. That's going to be used for some of my smaller parts. However for the larger parts I'm going to be using this single core heavier gauge and if you wonder where you get it I stripped it out of mains cable three core use two core whatever size or dimension you want and then simply strip off the insulation and that'll give you the copper wire that you need and you're going to be using the copper wire and dangling the items that you're plating into the solution so let's start off by getting prepared and getting everything set up to make the solution. 
So I have everything initially set up. I've got the positive already connected onto this plate. I've got my negative that I'm going to use here, but I need to fill this first of all with vinegar. And I'm also going to add in some table salt just to make sure everything has some good connectivity to start the process. So some table salt, not sponsored by Asda. And again, white vinegar, not sponsored by Sarsons. And now with everything hooked up, the last thing to do is to make sure that the power is on. And hopefully you can see straight away that the, the negative is uh, bubbling away quite nicely. And at this point, now it's just a waiting process. We've got to wait a whole, well, minimum of two hours to get this uh, into a, a condition we can use. So unless you really want to watch this for two hours, just bubbling away and slowly turning green, I'll see you in a short while. So here we are about two and a half hours later and you can see there has been a change. We're now distinctly green in colour and there's a lot of heat in this. A lot of heat. Looking at the bench power supply, it's currently drawing 28.8 watts. That's quite a lot. So I'm going to disconnect this now. Stop the process. And I'm going to lift out the negative and you can see it's distinctly changed colour. It's been plated. And if you want to see what happens to the positive, yeah, it starts to get eaten away. You can see the edges changing. There's some black pieces floating in, in the solution and that's come off of this. So we've definitely got a change and uh, I do have to say the room smells nicely of vinegar and just makes me want salt and vinegar crisps. <laughs> oh yeah, look at the edge crumbling. Hopefully you can see that under the light. For me it's now after 10 o'clock at night. My daughter is asleep in the room upstairs so I'm going to seal this up and we'll continue this later. So that's all the parts cleaned. I did that several days ago and I've left them in isopropyl alcohol to stop them corroding and that also helps get all the contamination from my greasy hands off of them. And what I have here is the solution ready to go, set up positive is there, negative will be the component that I want to plate and I've changed the voltage down to four and a half volts at about an amp. We also have distilled water and the most dangerous of all, hydrochloric acid. This is the one that you need to be really careful of and trust me, read all the instructions before you start using this stuff. It's in a glass container so that there are no accidents and no mistakes. First of all, I'm going to take the first component out, give it a clean, connect it with a copper wire, put the negative terminal on, and then I'm going to dip it into the solution. And the amount of time I leave it will depend on how long it takes to give a good finish. Well, a better finish than what we had to start with. So let's start off with one of the larger sections. So this is one of the keyboard standoffs. If you remember, it was very corroded and very rusty. I've got as much as I can get off into every nook and cranny. And now that it's been dried, I'm just going to connect my copper wire to it <laughs> without getting the rubber glove caught. And now I'm going to dip it in the distilled water. And what that's doing is just removing any last isopropyl alcohol. 
and then into the hydrochloric acid and it's going in there just for a short period of time because I do not want it to start pitting the surface and what this is doing is making sure that the last of the impurities are off I have no idea if that's long enough I am sure we will find out I'm going to rinse off the hydrochloric acid because we don't want that in our solution and now it's time to connect up power and let's see what happens Straight away we're getting a good reaction. It's bubbling away like crazy. Ooh, we're drawing just a little, yeah, we're actually drawing up to our amp. So I'm just going to carefully increase the current maximum that we can have, just in case it wants to draw a little more. Now it's important to know that depending on the side that you have facing, the positive, you need to make sure that at some point you actually turn it so that it gets evenly plated. Otherwise, the back of the item you're plating will not get plated as well. Perfect because the star product was not perfect and I couldn't get it clean enough but we'll take this and we'll rinse it off in the distilled water it's not perfect by any manner of means I'll give it a quick dip in the isopropyl and now we can take off the copper and you can actually see that the copper has plated quite nicely much nicer than the part's going to be because obviously the copper has a nice smooth corrosion free finish however let's give this a clean and as I say while it's not going to be perfect not by a long shot but yeah you can see where it hasn't plated as well whether that's down to me cleaning but that is now no longer rusty and it does have a base nickel coating. I was hoping it was going to come out a bit better than that, but hey, depends on what you start with. So let's pop this to the side and I'll see you after I've done all the rest. Well, that was quite a while. So when I did my initial tests, I actually used just the copper to test and see how it plated. And that's what I based my timings off. Yeah, copper plates really easily. The steel takes a lot longer. So you are going to have to just put it in and watch and see what happens. But look at the difference. Nickel plated. You can see where I haven't prepared the surface enough. But remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Even these, the very rusty plates came out not too bad at all and then I thought I would do a little bit of a test so you'll see this bit's a little bit shinier as is that and after doing this initial test wow <laughs> that's unbelievable okay it's not new but the, you, you, you can't tell that that was as bad and as rusty as it was that's just uh, yeah it's it's amazing the difference now one thing I didn't point out the solution has to be warm so I heated this up 
just in uh, a basin, popped this in, filled it with uh, hot water, brought the temperature up, changed the water until this was pleasantly warm to the touch. If you use it cold, it'll still work, it'll just take a lot longer. The other thing I ended up doing is putting the electrodes at either side so that, for example, when this was suspended, both front and back were getting plated evenly and then I turned it and both those got plated evenly. But you can see where it hasn't quite been prepped enough and yet where I have prepped it's come out really nicely. That's just amazing. Just amazing. So I'm going to pop these to the side. These are great successes but I also had some failures. I'm not going to take this out of the bag. It's still wet. I'm going to have to go away and prep this properly, but I didn't prep properly and we ended up with a massive blister of nickel that broke and it hasn't stuck properly to the surface and you can hear there's a ridge and it just fractures and comes off. So I'm going to have to give all this a good clean. The space bar came out not bad, it's not 100%, but it's certainly more than usable and I also tried the screws because all the screws were done I gave them a good clean however that was a mixed bag and yet I can go straight in and I can start picking out the screws that I know I tried to plate there were six of them there they are and it didn't work they are different to the rest. These ones were just given a good clean and they've actually come up really nicely for the most part. There are some that aren't as nice, but I do have some screws coming to replace these ones after seeing just how poorly this process worked. So these to the side are going to be replaced They'll be kept as backups just in case because you never know you know when you're you're going to need them um, so those ones will be replaced these ones we'll see what happens that one's not too bad actually as for the keyboard screws I just cannot get those at the moment so I'm going to have to live with those because you can see the color difference the, the plating for some reason just didn't work and they immediately started to tarnish after I took them out and they were in for a good 5-10 minutes in the solution. Small part but that should have been more than enough to give it a, a good initial surface coating and it didn't work. So what do I think of nickel plating? I'm remarkably surprised how easy it is. It's not cheap to set up. I suppose compared to certain things you could be doing like going out and paying somebody to nickel plate them it is cheaper but you're still going to have to spend a bit of money but you do end up with everything to do well you saw multiple different items and I've still got more than enough to keep going and produce more nickel plated items this will last quite a while <laughs> because as you're nickel plating the anode is of course is a nickel plate so you're still leaching more nickel into the solution and on it goes. One thing I can tell you, fruit flies love it. Um, yeah, don't know if you'll see, there's a fruit fly just there. So yes, I will do nickel plating in the future when I need to, but for now, thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, especially like if you like what was done here because uh, ticking that like thumbs up button does improve the algorithm immensely from our point of view as YouTubers. And I'll see you on the next Retro Crazy.